Happy New Year and welcome back to the channel. And as we are into 2026, I thought it would be time to do a full review of my solar generation and my heat pump performance for 2025. So before I go on, please hit the subscribe button. It massively helps out the channel. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you know I have um, 12 Q-cell uh, panels on a south-facing roof here in Swansea um, on a uh, 1930s uh, semi. And it um, outputs a peak of 4.65 kilowatts. That goes down into a 5 kilowatt hour, sorry, 5 kilowatt solace inverter. And I've also got a 5 ki uh, kilowatt hour pure drive battery, which were all installed in August 2022. And then in April 2025, I had Octopus install a 9 kilowatt Dakin heat pump. And in August, I had another uh, three 5 kilowatt hour pure drive batteries installed, giving me a total storage of 20 kilowatt hours, of which 18 kilowatt hours is usable. And I'll talk about all the costs of that at the end of the video. So um, let's go straight in with the generation. So this has been the best year for generation we've had. We've generated 500, sorry, 5,142.5 kilowatt hours this year, which is 700 kilowatt hours more than last year and about 330 more than um, our previous best year of 2023. In terms of monthly generation, it's been a bit of a hit or miss year. Um, you can see from this graph that January and February were well down on our numbers for 2023. And then things really kicked up in March and April before dropping off again compared to previous years in uh, May or June, before being far, far better again in July, August, October, sorry, September. October again was a low month, but then November was very good and December has been exceptional. And I'll do a whole video on my uh, generation for December, which I'll release next week. So I say, please hit the subscribe button. And if you hit the bell notification item icon, you'll get a notification when that video is released as well. So, yeah, overall, uh, this year has been exceptional for our solar production. And looking at other YouTubers who do these sort of videos, um, it seems to be a trend across the whole of the UK. So the question is, where did all this energy go? Well, because I'm on Octopus Intelligent Go, which um, basically means we pay 7p for uh, input for six hours between 11.30 at night and 5.30 in the morning, and then about 27p for the peak periods, um, and we get uh, an export tariff of 15 per kilowatt hour, it's actually better for us to import electricity and use that in the cheap period and store it in the batteries and export our solar than actually consume it. Um, it's a bit of a quirk of the energy um, industry at the moment and who knows it'll go on, how long they'll go on for but hopefully for another couple of years because it does increase our payback. Um, I should say I don't force um, export um, my batteries. I've done a little bit of it um, over the past year um, basically at the end of December when we were away and when Octopus gave us free electricity um, I exported for the hour before the three hour and then we topped up by then, but it probably only amounted to £10 in total. So for later on the video, that's useful information. I should also say I haven't included any of the um, uh, car charging in this video. Um, I charge the car very rarely just to keep um, up with the Octopus contract. Um, and when I do charge, it's only normally about 10 kilowatt hours once or twice a month. Um, and I haven't included those fi figures in this video because I do it when I do my yearly roundup of the car, which will come out in October. So that's where I count for all of that. OK, so let's look at our generation uh, or our usage then. So we had the heat pump installed in um, at the end of April. And at that time, we had our gas meter removed. And also uh, we swapped our gas hob for an induction hob. So we're a purely electric household now. Um, I do have a wood burner, which actually for the start of January, because it's been cold, so cold, I've actually been using and because we've been at home. But um, again, this is just our electricity consumption. So our total energy and electricity consumption for this year has been um, 4,301 kilowatt hours. 
of which 2,740 have been consumed just with the house and the remaining uh, 1,500-ish, 1,550-ish, has been used by the heat pump. Um, so we've used more electricity in the house compared to previous years where we only used about 2,400 to 2,500. That's partly because of the induction hob and also I think partly down to the fact we've been a little bit more uh, frivolous with our energy consumption this year just because of the amount of solar we've had. Um, so yeah, that's where all that has come from. So in terms of the heat pump, let's have a look at the figures for that. Um, so our, for heat in the house, which we basically did at the end of April, a little bit into May, and then from October through to the end of December, uh, we put 1,061 kilowatt hours into the heat pump. And it's output put, put 3,650-ish, which is a cop of 3.5, which isn't too bad. They were predicting a cop about 3.6 for from Octopus, so we're right on target for that. Uh, in terms of hot water, we've put in 469 kilowatt hours and we've got 791 out, which means there's only a cop of about 1.5. Um, so I do need to speak to Octopus about that, although there does seem to be quite a lot of discussion online about this and it seems that the Dakin uh, measurements of heat out in the hot water tends to be um, a, a massive underestimate um, and also the way that the app accumulates its usage figures uh, seems to mean that you can end up with an overestimate of the amount of energy you put in. So that um, COP might actually be um, well off, but uh, that's the only figures I've got to work from. So that means that um, let's just talk a little bit about money at this point. If um, we were still on a gas boiler paying 7p per kilowatt hour, plus an extra 10% for the boiler only being 90% efficient. And we used that 1,434 kilowatt hours for heating the house and heating hot water. That would have cost us about uh, £347.82. So again, that's a figure to try and keep in mind. Um, if we go back to our usage, uh, we have actually imported quite a lot of electricity this year. We've imported 3,113 kilowatt hours. And we have exported 3,877 kilowatt hours. So just because I said this sort of weird thing in the energy industry where it's better for us to export our solar and then import at a cheaper time uh, means that so for some people, this is a very strange situation where we generated a lot more electricity than we used this year. But we've also imported most of what um, we've actually needed to use. Um, so we've actually used about 1,200 of our own solar actually power in the house and uh, the heat pump. So, yeah, that's an oddity, but it's playing the system to get the best payback and basically pay the lowest energy bills. So that's what I'm doing. OK, so let's now talk about the savings and money. So this is always going to be taken with a pinch of salt because it depends on how you calculate all of this sort of stuff. So what we do know that if um, when we had the gas meter installed, we saved 31p per day since the end of April. So that's totaled £78.91. pence. We also know we've exported that 3,877 kilowatt hours and Octopus have paid us 15p for every one of those kilowatt hours, which is another £581.57. If we were to have used the 2,700 kilowatt hours for the house and we were to have paid the 25p per kilowatt hour, which I think we would have been able to get um, by possibly going to a different energy provider, that would have cost us £685. And we also know that the gas would have cost us about £350. So if we add up the amount we would have spent on gas, so that £350 and the £685, um, we're talking um, about just over £1,000 we would have spent on our energy bill this year. However, we have only paid Octopus excluding the stand-in charge, £240. So that means we've made an 
overall saving this year by having the green tech of um, £791.37. and p. If we then add to that saving the money we save on the gas meter and our SEG, that means our total saving or money in or total payback for the year is £1,451.87. So that's the biggest payback we've had on our solar panel and green technology we've ever had. Last year was our next best year, which was at uh, £940. So if we calculate the, add together all the savings we've had over the, since having the solar panels, that just comes to a saving of 3000 and, or total payback of £3,086.59. But of course, we've also had a big expenditure on this. Oh, I should say, so you get videos going, but what happens if uh, you haven't included in your figures, what happens if you put your money into a high interest bank account or something like that? So for those people, that's totally irrelevant because I would have still had to use that money to pay my gas bill. So that money in that bank account would have reduced over time and I would just ended up with nothing over time. So it's not an investment at all doing that. Um, so, yeah. So let's have a look how much we've actually paid for everything. So our initial install for the solar panels and battery in uh, uh, 2022 was £8,500. Our extra batteries this year cost us another £5,325. And now we've got the difficulty of how much our heat pump actually cost us. So just to go through the figures, the initial quote from Octopus was £10,390. But from that... I had £7,500 from the bus count, from the government. I also had another £250 knocked off from Octopus for ordering in October last year. Well, 2024, actually, the year before. Um, I also had £100 off for using somebody's um, referral code. And then I've got my own referral code from that. And using my own referral code, so thank you to all the people who have used it, um, that has come to another £850 off the total cost. I also had £2,000 cash back from Halifax for having a mortgage with them. I then had to pay £230 for planning permission because Wales haven't updated their planning laws, unlike England. And then I had another £100 taken off because I sold my radiator and old thermostat. So in fact, my heat pump, if you do all those sums, so you take the initial quote and you take away everything that I've saved on or sold and you add back the planning permission, the heat pump would actually cost us minus £180. Which means that the total cost of my solar and green energy to date has been £13,645. So if we take away the £3,086 we've had... Um, in payback, that means we're down to two thousand. Oh, sorry, ten thousand five hundred and fifty-eight pounds. So this time next year, hopefully, I'll be talking to you and saying it's down to about nine thousand pounds. So it means we've got about another four or five years, probably six actually, depending on what happens in the energy market, to pay back our full investment. Yep. Yeah, so that's uh, uh, where we stand with the payback. In terms of have we managed to hit zero energy bills? Um, so I look back at my gas bills from January to April, and that totaled £411. And then on top of that, I also have to pay um, the standing charge for my electricity meter, which is 50p a day, which is another £182.50. So as you can see, that's already mounting up to nearly £600. So no, we... Um, we're not uh, zero energy bills because we only made £581 from our um, SEG. On top of that, we also have to pay the £240 that um, we paid to Octopus for our electricity import. So add in the gas, the standing charge and the amount we've also paid to Octopus for our electricity import, that comes to £833.65. If we take away the £581.57, uh, um, 
that means, means that our total energy bill for the house, so that's heating, uh, cooking, and just generally running the house in, as a whole, has been £52.09. Uh, so with the heat pump, that should come down a bit more. So when I look at the April to April figure, when I do a review of how well the heat pump has worked this year, we'll see if that's how close to zero we can get there. But it doesn't look like we can become a zero um, bill energy house or zero energy bill household uh, with our current setup um, and current lifestyle. Um, and as I say, this has been an exceptional year for solar. So if it wasn't that good, we'd probably have less seg as well. So um, that's something to bear in mind. So at some point, we will probably get some more solar panels when we do our kitchen extension and see if that has an impact on uh, that number as well. So just one last figure to show to you, because somebody asked for this in the last video, which was, what is the price we actually pay for our kilowatt hour? Um, so because the house has used to, um, 4,301 kilowatt hours this year, and we've ended up paying to Octopus that um, £140, if we divide one number by other, we get an actual price per kilowatt hour of zero of six pence per kilowatt hour. So that's basically sort of you might expect that to be lower because we generate our electricity. But as I say, because we export more of it and we pay the import, we're actually close to that seven p that we actually pay for import. But yeah, that's what the overall price per kilowatt hour we paid this year is. Anyway, uh, I think this video has gone on long enough. Thank you for watching. As I say, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in another video very soon.